I'll never forget the day a mother sent her four children to school with two hot dogs to share, or when another mom regularly gave each of her kids a little Debbie snack for the day's sustenance. Seeing how many of the families in the Grant Park neighborhood here in East Tampa struggled to provide food for their children, I knew we had to rally together to feed the kids entrusted to our care. My name is Pastor Alfred Johnson. I founded Grant Park Christian Academy in 2015 to provide pre-K through eighth grade children the opportunity to receive a robust education from a biblical perspective. We want our students to become positive catalysts of change in a community known for its poverty, crime rate, and homelessness. All of our students come from families below the federal poverty level. They receive scholarships to attend our school. And most of the students come from public schools where they struggled academically and socially. But as we all know, you can't think on an empty stomach, and proper nourishment is critical to behaving and performing well in school. So five years ago, we joined the National School Lunch Program. It enabled us to serve our students a nutritious breakfast, lunch, and snack every day, including during the summer. My wife, Donna, you know, she's the queen of the school kitchen. She leads the kitchen staff in putting healthy food on the kids' plates, even buying organic when the budget allows. For many of our students, the meals they receive at school are the best food they eat all day. And as much as we're able to, we send leftovers home with kids and deliver food boxes to families particularly in need. But in 2022, our entire food program was in jeopardy. Right before we opened our doors to the 56 eager students neatly dressed in their school uniform, and anticipating eating breakfast together, the Biden administration and Florida Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed decided to use these precious kids and the thousands of others just like them across the country as political pawns. Because we receive funding from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to run the lunch program, we are subject to federal statute Title IX, the Biden administration tried to leverage that against us to impose a radical expansion of sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity in all our school operations, including restrooms, dress codes, hiring, and pronoun usage. Our religious beliefs, including our biblically formed understanding of the nature of the human person and marriage and family, are at odds with this sweeping ideology that drastically redefines what it means to be male and female. That's especially important when it comes to practical realities, from classroom instruction and hiring, to protecting girls' opportunities in extracurricular activities, and their privacy in restrooms. So I wrote letters to the state and federal officials explaining that our compliance with this mandate would violate the core tenets of our faith. I pointed out that Title IX provides a religious exemption and explained that we should be protected from abandoning our beliefs to keep food on our tables. In response, the federal government ignored my appeal. Meanwhile, state officials callously replied that we weren't required to continue the school lunch program. That answer didn't sit well with me when I looked on the faces of the students enrolled at Grant Park Christian Academy. These kids rely on these meals to activate their minds and bodies. And just as importantly, these children need to know they belong to a safe community where they are loved and championed. So with the legal assistance of Alliance Defending Freedom, we filed a lawsuit against President Biden and Commissioner Freed. And we had no choice. The government officials were more interested in forcing compliance with their radical political agenda than ensuring impoverished kids receive food. Just nine days after filing suit, the government officials granted our religious exemption and necessary funding. It's sad that it took a lawsuit for the government to respect religious liberty. We received an 11th hour answer to prayer, and so did schools across the nation 
when the USDA agreed to follow the law and automatically respect exemption to Title IX for all religious schools. I'm a pastor with boots on the ground serving the city I grew up in. I'm part of a vast network of those committed to revitalizing our community by building systemic programs that meet critical needs and inspire hope in our young people. The government should be partnering with us and every other leader across the country engaged in outreach to uplift their community, not targeting those who hold Christian faith and values. You can find more stories like mine at adflegal.org slash freedom matters. You can also subscribe to this channel on YouTube and click the notification bell so you never miss an episode.